Everything in nature is made up of particles called atoms. In the center of the atom, there are protons and neutrons, which consist of quarks. This year's Nobel Prize in Physics has gone to scientists who have unraveled the mystery of the most powerful force in the atom. A man of many talents, Frank Vilcek is one of three recipients of the Nobel Prize in Physics. His interest in quarks began when he was a graduate student. At the simplest level, a quark is a basic building block of matter. Protons and neutrons were once called elementary particles, but now we know that they're actually very complicated objects. The force between quarks is known as the strong force. It has puzzled scientists for decades. This year's second Nobel laureate in physics is based at the University of California at Santa Barbara. David Gross started working with Frank Vilcek in the 70s. So Frank was my first graduate student and, uh, and he spoiled me completely because I thought all graduate students were as good as Frank, <laughs> which I learned was not the case. Um, and some of my later students might have suffered from that over-expectation. So he was very unusual. No, it was very crucial to my development that uh, I ran into this extremely talented and extremely charismatic young professor at the time. And, uh, and uh, we made a very good team. And he really inspired me, as he's inspired a lot of people over the years, to uh, work hard. And he brings out the best in people also had some good ideas. Explaining the strong force between quarks was a formidable task for Gross and his young protege. If you smash an, an atom, electrons get emitted. That's the basis of all of our electronics. It's easy to remove electrons from an atom. But if you smash protons, you just get more protons or other exotic nuclei, nuclear particles, pions and kaons and sigmas, all sorts of names and strange particles and lots and lots of different kinds. But they all are like the proton. You never get a quark. Along with David Politzer of the California Institute of Technology, Vilcek and Gross have been awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for explaining the strong force. The reason the three scientists share the prize is due to a rare act of generosity and cooperation. We only found out about his existence after we had done the essential calculations, but we did decide to uh, publish our central calculation uh, side by side so as not to have any unpleasant kind of trying to scoop a rivalry. So. Whilst Politzer worked alone, Gross and Vilcek collaborated, setting complex mathematical problems to calculate how the strong force worked over various distances. I was trying to think about, you know, how you would do this calculation, what it would mean. David wanted the result, so he said, come on. Stop fooling around. Don't worry about gauge and variance. Don't worry about that. Just calculate. So, <laughs> so that was that was uh, bracing. So I was okay. So we, I decided to, uh, I had to calculate. The theory that emerged was a theory in which the quarks have charges. We call colors, and um, but those charges were uh, not observed directly either because the only objects you had were neutral with respect to these charges. So you couldn't see the constituents, they, you couldn't pull them out of the nucleus, you didn't know what the charges were, the force, you didn't know what the forces were, and the only thing you really knew was that whatever the force was, it was very strong. The laureates derived a theory called quantum chromodynamics to explain the behavior of quarks. They concluded that the closer the quarks are to each other, the weaker the force between them. This phenomenon was called asymptotic freedom. Asymptotic freedom, which was the, what was crucial, the crucial discovery, in fact told you that the strong force gets weaker 
as you go to higher energies or shorter distances. And that was unexpected because electromagnetism, the force of electricity and magnetism, is a force that gets uh, stronger at short distances, just the opposite of asymptotic freedom. It was a beautiful theory, but without experiments to prove it was right, some remained skeptical. A colleague of mine uh, in Princeton, uh, a few months after uh, our discovery, said to me, David, this is a, a great, this is really a nice theory, and it might even be right, but it'll never be verified in your lifetime. Well, it was theoretical, but it was rooted in trying to explain experimental phenomena, and right from the beginning we saw our task as uh, making predictions about future experiments. Scientists subsequently tested the Laureate's theory to see if it stood up to scrutiny. So far, they haven't been able to find any significant flaws. This is very frustrating for the experimentalists. They like nothing better than to prove that accepted theories or speculative theories are wrong. Uh, but so far, they haven't succeeded. Through their discovery of asymptotic freedom, Gross, Politzer and Vilcek have made a monumental contribution to physics. The Nobel Prize is very much a tribute to their passionate desire to understand the world. Life is a great gift. And uh, what I've learned is that, for me at least, and I think for many people, one, one thing that makes our life meaningful is uh, figuring out, in fact, what is it? all about why you know why yeah why are we here what 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 all these strange things that are going on why are they happening and uh, uh, the more you find out the more you find it's it's extremely strange and but also in many ways very beautiful the reason we do what we do is because we're uh, just awe-stricken by the beauty of what we learn. And so those moments where one discovers something new and suddenly sees a, uh, a new structure and a new insight into how nature works reveal itself, which so often is much more beautiful than we could have imagined, uh, we are indeed awe-stricken.